Buenos dias and welcome back to another video, my friends. I hope that you are staying healthy and I hope that you're staying safe. Today on the channel, I wanna talk about three Canon EF lenses that you can use with great success on the Canon EOS R, the R5, and the R6. In today's video, all of the lenses will be mounted on the EF to R adapter. Specifications are important when you buy a new lens, but they are definitely not everything. And today I wanna to focus more on the adaptability and the functionality of these three lenses. But not to worry, for you spec hounds, I will be providing you some details along the way. Let's start off with a shot comparison of all three lenses from the same location. I actually shot these images earlier today at the train depot and I stood in the same exact area for each of these lenses, 20 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and I shot 10 millimeters on the EFS lens, but know that an EFS lens is made for an APS-C sensor. That means you're gonna have a 1.6 times crop. So let's talk about the first lens and the first image, which was shot at 10 millimeters on the 10 to 18 lens. Now, as I mentioned before, that this has a 1.6 times crop, so the equivalent on this lens would have been 16 millimeters. And the Canon EOS R actually defaults to 1.6 times crop as soon as you put this lens on it. So that is wonderful. You don't have to do a thing. But the other thing is you can't attempt to go full frame or a three to two ratio it locks it in at 1.6 times crop so it's all ready for you and this lens does exactly what it is asked to do shoot wide and capture a large range of the train station the next image that was shot from the exact same location was shot on the 20 millimeter lens now 20 millimeters is not much of a difference or a far take from the 16 millimeter, but it does give you a slight difference. So basically, it's a similar shot, just punched in just a bit more. However, this allows you to see what a prime lens at 20 millimeters can provide based on perspective. And the last lens in the last shot is on the 50 millimeter from again, the same location, which immediately gives you a different look and feel. It allows the viewer a bit more insight on the location, gives you more of the ability to punch in and see some more details. Now obviously it's not as wide so it doesn't give you a complete story of the train station. However, that's not what we wanted here. We wanted to utilize what the 50 millimeter can do and that is just provide you with a little more detail and cut in to different parts of a scene. Now the purpose of this exercise was to show that while each of these lenses has their own specialty or sweet spots such as portrait photography, street, landscapes, etc., it's you, the photographer, who needs to manage each lens and apply them correctly to your situation and your photography scene. For example, I took some portraits of my friend Wes today on the 50 millimeter Nifty 50 and this is known as a portrait lens, but I adapted it and applied it also to the 10 to 18 and the 20 millimeter. You shouldn't be deterred by the lens specs and what people tell you what you should use it for. Experiment and you just might find unique cases for particular lenses. So let's check out some of the images used on various lenses that I used today, which is the 50 millimeter, the 20 millimeter, and the 10 to 18. Now let's talk a little bit more about each lens. First up is the Canon EF 50 millimeter 1.8, coming in at a price of about $100. Overall, a great lens at a great price. 
This lens can be adapted to the Canon EOS R, the R5, or the R6 with the EF2R adapter. And that gives you an opportunity to get into a 50 millimeter prime lens, get that nice bokeh at a very low cost, a fraction of what the RF 50 millimeter will cost. Now, once at 1.8, this lens is great in low light and it has a fast autofocus. Next is the Canon EFS 10 to 18 millimeter F 4.5 to 5.6. Coming in at a price of around $300, this thing is ultra wide. But just remember that it is meant for an APS-C sensor, so be, you'll be utilizing this lens on a one to six times crop automatically on the Canon EOS R, and I'm assuming that will be the same for the R5 and the R6. So 10 millimeters will be shot at about 16 millimeters, its equivalent. And macro capabilities are awesome on this lens. I mean, it's not a true macro lens coming in at 0.15 times magnification. However, it does allow you to get closer to your subject to take unique portraits, even environmental portraits might be a great use or adaptability to this lens. Just a quick note that 0.15 times magnification comes in when you are at 18 millimeters on the 10 to 18. And the last inexpensive lens that I want to talk about that can be adapted to your Canon EOS R, R5, and R6 is the Canon EF 20 millimeter F 2.8 lens. This is a wonderful wide lens with a very small and fast aperture. It can be utilized for stars, unique portraits, environmental shots. It's a very nice prime. It's a sharp prime. And lastly, a little known fact about this lens is that it has IFC, intelligent field curvature on the glass. And what that means is that in your wide shots with this 20 millimeter, the objects that are not in the center of the frame are much sharper on the edges and on the sides. Hey gang, I'm back in the studio and boy do these three lenses have a lot to offer you. In fact, there's a lot of Canon EF glass that has a lot to offer you. In fact, there's lots of non-Canon glass such as Tamron, Sigma, Rokinon, and the list goes on and on that they have a lot to offer you. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I got into the Canon EOS R because I wanted to get into the RF lineup of glass, but that does not mean that's gonna stop me from using my EF lenses. And these EF lenses, you might not particularly use them for what you think you might use them. So using a 20 millimeter for portraits, who does that? Well, I do, and you might. You might wanna start getting your own clientele and being a unique shooter. Now, if you wanna shoot 50 millimeters, start off with the Nifty 50. It's at, our, it's at about $100. I think that's a great way to introduce your R to an inexpensive piece of glass that'll allow you to get that bokeh and start to work on your composition and your skills. No need to get right into the 50 millimeter RF glass unless you have the means and if you do go for it that's that's the way to go but nonetheless there is all this inexpensive glass that is really good glass and unique glass and it's us the photographers that have to utilize it in a specific way that will be unique to us and our photography. All right, I got a few more images to show you on the way out. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. Please leave me a like if this video provided you any value, please give me a comment down below and tell me what kind of glass you're using on your Canon EOS R, what you hope to use on your R5 or R6 or whatever lenses you're using. I'd love to know. I'd love to hear what other photographers are doing. Please ring that bell to notify you of new videos when they're released. That's gonna do it. Enjoy these last few images. Love you guys. Peace.